The HEQ5 Pro Goji mount is one of the most well-known and widely used mounts in the hobby of astrophotography. For more than four years I have been using this mount to capture amazing images of galaxies, nebulae and star clusters. For me it was the best decision to start this hobby with this mount. In this video I would like to share my experience with this mount over the past few years. In the beginning I would like to give you an overview and go over some of the key facts of this mount. But before we start, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored, I'm not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now let's talk about a few specific facts about this specific mount. So first of all, I would like to talk about the payload capacity because when selecting or when choosing a mount, it's very important that it is big enough for your telescope because when your mount is, is too small for your telescope, you will get a lot of problems with tracking and guiding in the near future. And tracking and guiding is so important when doing astrophotography because when your guiding is not that good or your tracking is not that good, you will get star chills in the final results. And that is something we do not want to have in astrophotography. Therefore, I would like to talk about the payload capacity first of all. So when looking into the internet, you will find different numbers when it comes to the payload capacity of that specific mount. So you can split that into visual observations and into photography, so astrophotography. So for visual observations, you will find 14 kilograms and for astrophotography, you will find uh, 10 kilograms. But I can only say that I cannot recommend using this mount uh, with that heavy equipment attached to it. So for me personally, I would recommend using maximum capacity, payload capacity of nine kilograms on that mount. So that really depends on different uh, factors, so on the conditions. So if it's windy outside, uh, that's definitely a problem. But overall, I would recommend using that specific mount at a maximum payload capacity of nine kilograms. So I would not recommend using that uh, mount at a payload capacity of 10 kilograms for photography and 14 kilograms of visual visual observation. So I've tested that mount with different equipment attached to it and for me personally 9 kilogram was the maximum power capacity for me personally. Now I would like to go over to the go-to function of this mount. So as we mentioned or as you probably know this is a go-to mount which means that you can select objects in the hand controller of that mount and then the object then in the telescope will move to that object you have selected. So this mount definitely has a go-to function and that is very, very helpful because in the astrophotography we are not always capturing objects that are very bright such as the Andromeda galaxy because sometimes we capture objects that are not that bright and in that case it's very helpful to have a mount that has go-to function because you will not find those very dark objects without a go-to function. It's definitely possible but it's very very difficult. So in that specific mount there are objects included which means um, that you can find a lot of objects with the go-to function of the telescope. So far I've found all objects with that go-to function and since there are uh, over 40,000 objects included that's definitely not a problem and you will find almost all objects you would like to capture in the near future in astrophotography. But now let's go over to uh, the tracking speed of that mount. So something we really like about that one is that you can select the tracking speed of that specific mount. So you can switch between a mode for stars, moon and sun. And that is something I really like about that one. So when planning to capture images of deep sky objects including galaxies, nebula and star clusters, so all of those objects you use a uh, star mode but when planning to capture an image of the moon or the sun, you can as well switch into the mode uh, that is uh, made for moon and sun. Uh, capturing, so for capturing images of the moon and the sun, and that's something I really like. You can switch uh, the mode um, on the computer, for example, when connecting the mount to your computer, but you can as well switch the mode um, with the hand controller that is attached to your mount. Now I'd like to go over to um, the finder scope. So this is an equatorial mount, which means that you need to do the polar alignment process, which means that you need to center the entire mount to polaris. And um, so there is a polar finder scope integrated into that mount. And uh, something I really like about that one is that there is built-in LED, a red LED, which makes finding those objects definitely so much easier because um, that definitely helps me to find polaris a bit faster. And that's definitely something I really like about that specific finder scope that is built into that uh, HEQ5 Pro go to mount. And now I would like to talk about the counterweights because they come with that specific telescope as usual. And so there are two of them, 
with so each uh, 5.1 kilograms. And uh, so you can see uh, these two ones here, uh, so uh, 5.0, 5.1 kilograms each. And that's definitely perfect because with that one, you can balance definitely, you can balance almost all the telescopes, perhaps when using a very heavy equipment, a very heavy uh, telescope attached to your mount, perhaps you might need a third one, but so far I have had no problems. Um, furthermore, I would like to talk about the connections on the mount. So you can see these parts here. Um, so this one here, this is the port for the hand controller. In this case, I've attached an EQMOD cable, which helps me to control the mount uh, with the ASI Air Pro or to connect this mount to my computer. But uh, normally when buying the telescope, you attach your hand controller right here. Here is uh, the power input of that mount and you can even attach uh, an auto guider right here. But I would not recommend to do so because that's not working that good for me personally. So I would rather uh, control the guiding system uh, with your computer or with your laptop or if you have one with the ASI Air Pro. And that definitely makes me, that definitely makes um, controlling the entire mount so much easier for me. So as we mentioned, I've attached this EcoMod cable here right here uh, where you normally attach uh, your hand controller and with that cable, I'm controlling the mount. But now there might be the question, how well does this mount track? Because when looking for a mount, it's very important for you that the mount is perfect for your astrophotography and it tracks perfect because we do not want to get star trails in our final results. In the beginning, when getting into astrophotography, I used that specific mount without guiding. And when doing a good polar LM process, when aligning your mount towards Polaris quite good, you can definitely achieve two minutes of total exposure time without getting star trails in our final results. But that definitely depends on how good you do the polar alignment process. And furthermore, there are definitely differences between those different mounts. For me personally, uh, it was definitely possible to achieve a total exposure time of two minutes without getting star trails, without auto guiding. And in general, when using uh, an auto guiding system, so when attaching an off axis guider or a guide scope in general, you're, um, you are able to achieve long exposure times without getting star trails. So right now I'm using around five minutes of total exposure time with a guiding system. So I'm using a guide scope I've attached on the top of the telescope and that definitely works perfect. And I can definitely achieve a total exposure time of five minutes without getting star trails. And when getting to that hobby later on, perhaps you will upgrade to a guiding system and then you will definitely have no problems, but you still, you can achieve great images without a guiding system, definitely. So for me personally, two minutes was okay. Now we'd like to talk about the tripod as well. Standard tripod is definitely very, very good. Uh, the, st the stability is very, very good, but um, just a tip for you, I would not recommend uh, fully extending your tripod because that's not that good for stability, but in general, the mount is def uh, in general, the tripod is perfect for that one and the stability is perfect and you can definitely achieve very, very great results when using that mount for astrophotography. So the tripod is definitely perfect and um, I've had no problems so far using that specific setup. So when choosing a mount for astrophotography, it's very important that your mount is portable and it's not that heavy. And um, that mount is, I mean, it's definitely a bit more, it's definitely heavier compared to a normal Star Trekker, such as the uh, Scout Star Start Venture, definitely, because that one is a mount that's built for bigger telescopes, so in those bigger refractor or Newtonian telescopes. But when comparing the HEQ5 Pro go-to mount to an EQ6, um, definitely the EQ6 is much heavier and that one is still portable. So I'm planning to capture an image of the night sky. I usually carry that entire deep sky astrophotography setup out there without um, the counterweights and without the telescope. And that's definitely not a problem. So as we mentioned, Still, it's quite heavy compared to a Star Trekker, but still it's very portable and it's not that heavy compared to other mounts com uh, such as the EQ6 or the EQ8. But now to my final conclusion. So I've been using that mount over the past few years and so far I've had no problems with that mount. The tracking is perfect, definitely, and it's not that expensive compared to other mounts on the market. And still you have a lot of payload capacity, so nine kilogram uh, of payload capacity is definitely not a problem and you can uh, attach a lot of telescopes on that and you will achieve very, very great tracking, definitely. It's not that heavy as I mentioned and it's a very, very reliable mount, definitely. So I've had no problems so far. So when looking on my YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of images I've captured with that specific mount. And for me personally, these results are amazing and 
this moment definitely helped me to get my first steps into astrophotography. So I started into astrophotography with the HEQ5 Pro GoTo mount and I'm still using that mount because I do not need to upgrade my mount because it's still working perfect and I can attach almost all telescopes I would like to capture to that one. So when you're using a bigger neutron telescope, that might definitely be a problem, but so far I have no problems with that one and I can definitely recommend it. If you have any specific questions on that mount, definitely make sure to write these questions down below in the comments and it would definitely help you. So if this guide in this video was helpful to you, I would really, really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching and until next time. Clear skies, Felix.